way to practice vocabulary is to use it in your transition time. So today, um, as we work through our 60 minutes um, of uh, practicing a, a common standard, I inserted some vocabulary practice by having um, children choose a card and look at the card, see if they could remember what the card, uh, what the word of the card was in the definition. So using transitions is a nice way to just pass out the cards and give children uh, another time to put their eyes across that text and interact with the word. I need everyone to stand up. And I want you to get in a circle. Okay, we're gonna get in a, oh, they did that so quickly. Nice, oh my God. I'm gonna give every one of you a card that looks like this. I want you to, Karen, I want you to look at your card and see if you can read it and see if you can figure out what the definition is. And if you can't, I'll help you. Okay, here's your card. Here we go. Take a look at it. See if you can figure out what the word is. Ooh, I don't know about that one. All right, are you looking at your word? Okay, your word is embarrassed. Embarrassed. Is this my topic? What? Key details. Key details. Avoid short vowels. Agree. Short vowels. Like those right there are short vowels. Okay. All right. I'm going. Yours is fairness. Okay. Stubborn. I'm going to start some music, and this is what I want you to do. I want you to walk in a circle till the music stops. Then if you need some help with your word, I'll help you with the word, okay? All right, so here we go. Okay, go ahead. My friends, take your hands me. We're always there for each other. You'll see the stuff on the candy. There's so much in the wood to discover. Okay. Find a person standing next to you and show them your card, and if you can read it, tell them what it is. Okay. So what's your card? What it says? So if yours is positive, here, come over here. I don't see feet. Yours is positive. Something that's What is mine again? I can't read mine. Yeah, like you old boys. I can't read mine. You know what I'm going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. Don't want to do things that you can't help. Okay? Jealous. You know what jealous is? If you want something that somebody else wants, right? Okay, do you know what yours is? Positive. Something that's good, right? Okay, let's move again. Move again. Go. need help on the way. Buster might save the day. You can stretch out. Okay, go to somebody else. Tell them your word. Tell me your word. Today in writing workshop, we um, were writing opinion pieces. The children during module C in first grade have had lots of practice with opinion writing and hopefully understand what the structure of an opinion piece would be. 
So today we were just continuing that practice using two characters that we used previously in Reading Workshop in Read Aloud. The children had to choose which Winnie the Pooh character is their favorite. And they were using the collages, all the pictures that they had used during Reading Workshop and Read Aloud to help them find reasons why they chose the particular character that they did. So the lesson was really um, kind of a reminder lesson of this is what an opinion piece looks like. You have to name the topic. We've just done all of that practice in reading, naming a topic, um, and then giving reasons uh, why this, this, this um, particular topic um, was, was my favorite. So if Winnie the Pooh was my favorite, why? Why did I pick Winnie the Pooh? And I can use these pictures in the collage to remind myself perhaps that Winnie the Pooh is playful or Winnie the Pooh loves honey um, and, the, and those types of things. So um, the children were writing an opinion piece um, all in a very short amount of time because they'd already had lots of practice with topics, naming reasons, and getting to the point. Now, we have just spent some time today, guys, studying pictures and illustrations, figuring out what the topic is, looking at details in the pictures. We haven't even been using the words to figure out like what is it the author wants us to know? What is the key, key point. point? Very good. So that made me think we were just talking about Winnie the Pooh and Tigger. And I'm wondering which Kieran, well, yeah, there's, yeah, there's Eeyore too. So I'm wondering, which one of these characters do you like the best? Okay, so I want you to think about that. Hmm. Okay, if you like Winnie the Pooh the best, raise your hand. Nice. If you like Tigger the best, raise your hand. If you like Eeyore the best, raise your hand. Oh, but you have to pick one. So let's say I picked Winnie the Pooh. Okay, I'm picking Winnie the Pooh as my favorite. So I'm going to write an opinion piece of paper. I'm going to write an opinion piece about how I like Winnie the Pooh the best. I'm going to give my opinion. And you guys know a little bit about opinion writing, right, Isaiah? You know that when you write an opinion, you name the topic and you give your opinion and you say why. Okay, so listen to this. See what you think about this. I'm picking Winnie the Pooh, and this is how I'm going to start. Give a cheer for Winnie the Pooh. You guys yeah, do that. Give, give a, a cheer, cheer for Winnie, Winnie the Pooh. Pooh. He is my favorite character. You say it. He is, is my favorite, favorite character. I like Winnie the Pooh because he likes honey. I like Winnie the Pooh because he likes honey. Let's put it all together. Give a cheer for Winnie the Pooh. He is my favorite character. I like Winnie the Pooh because he likes honey. Also, he finds a way to get honey any way he can. Also, he finds a way to get honey any way he can. Winnie the Pooh is my favorite. See how he did that? If that's, you just read it from there. I yeah, know. I did. You know why? Because that's my opinion piece. What if, okay, what if I wanted to do Tigger? I might start like this. Give a cheer for Tigger. Tigger is my favorite. I, I like Tigger because he likes to play. Also, Tigger is bouncy. Tigger is my favorite. What if I wanted to write Eeyore? Kieran, how could I start? Give a cheer for Eeyore. Eeyore is my favorite character. I like Eeyore because he gets wet. He gets wet. He gets wet. He gets sleepy. He's funny. He's funny. He's goofy. He's goofy. Eeyore is my favorite. Do you see how we did that? 
Yeah, so we already kind of have an idea of how our story might go. So on my piece of paper, I'm going to start like this. Give a cheer for Winnie the Pooh. I like Winnie the Pooh the best because he likes honey. See how that works? All right, so I want you to be thinking, who is going to be your favorite character? And I'm going to put out our picture so you can take a look at them if you need to find some reasons why you like Winnie the Pooh or Tigger or even Eeyore. You get to pick. Okay, so you be thinking while I get the paper. Yeah, let's pick one of those three because we talked about them today. Okay, so if you look around the tables, you're going to see some paper and you're going to see some pencils. Those will be the tables you'll be writing. All right, so up. Let me see who a good role model is right here. Isaiah, if you could look just like Isaiah right here, this would be good. So Isaiah, would you show us? Oh, I'm sorry, Samuel. Sam. Sam, who is your favorite character? Pooh. Pooh. Okay, so Samuel, would you show how you walk over to the tables and sit down and get started writing with... What are you going to write first? Uh, Give a cheer for Winnie the Pooh. Okay, go. Is he your favorite? He likes honey. Hmm? He likes honey. He likes honey? Okay. So you can put that. That's a reason. Yeah. Oh, you're going for that big word. What do you think comes yeah. next? Yeah. Why do you like him? What do you like about him so much? He's pitched up a lot and was going to find them. And when the water pulled in, he's just a little bit taller. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Rysik is writing that Tigger is his favorite character. And he wrote, Tigger is my favorite character. And then he was getting ready to start another sentence. And you know what he did? At the end of his sentence, he put a full stop because he wants me, the reader, to stop there. Can you check and make sure, just like Rysik, that you put periods at the end of where you want your reader to stop? Like the end of a sentence? Well, let's check and make sure because that's really important. Thank you, Rysik, for reminding us. Oh, I see some people remembering their periods now. Good job. Okay, you can get another piece of paper. Great. So, right here you said, do you like Pooh Bear? Right? So, that kind of sounds like it's the end. Is that, is that like the end of your piece? Or are you going to add some more? You're going to add one more? Okay. About the honey? Okay. So I like him because he likes honey. Pooh Bear is cuddly. He has friends. Do you like Pooh Bear? What would make sense to go next? He tries his best to get honey. So that would be like a lesson he teaches us. He tries his best. That's the point. Okay. You going to write that somewhere? Okay, so writers, I have one last thing that I want to share. Henry and I are talking about the ending of his story. And I don't know if you guys have ever tried this before, but sometimes writers will start 
and end their stories with the same sentence. Have you ever heard of that? You do that sometimes? So if I started my piece, give a cheer for Winnie the Pooh, he is my favorite character. I like Winnie the Pooh because he likes honey. Right? Kind of like you did. I could end my story just like I started. I might say, go ahead, give a cheer for Winnie the Pooh. I could start it and end it the same way. Have you ever tried that before? Yeah, you might want to try that if you can't think of an ending. Is make your ending the same as how you started it. Okay? All right, one more minute, so finish up. Okay, everyone, stop right where you are. And if you didn't get to finish, that's okay. You'll have another day to work on this. Could you put your pencils in the basket? And then stand up behind your chair and push your chair in. I just finished the word because then I won't remember what That's cool. Oh, 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 leave your pieces right on the table. Face up. Because what we're going to do is we're going to do a walking share. So I'm going to start some music. And I want you to very quietly, I want you to take a look at everybody's writing to see who likes Tigger, who likes Poo. Take a look at the work they did. So make sure that your paper is laying flat so everyone can get a good look at it. Has the music started? Has the music started? No, it has not. Okay, when the music starts, you can start walking around. <laughs> Okay, go ahead and just walk around quietly and take a look. Ooh. Are you looking at the writing? I get some ideas from your friends. Are you seeing periods? Okay, when you've looked at everybody, go back and stand behind your chair. I can see three periods. Three periods, awesome. Okay, writers, can you come back and sit in your lines just like you were when we started today? Thank you for not running. All right, so readers, this is what we did today. We studied photographs and illustrations to see what we could learn using our eyes. And we asked ourselves some questions about these photographs. We said, what is the topic. topic? And then we said, what are the details. details? And then we said, what do these details tell us? What is the topic? What is the point, right? What is the point that the author wants us to remember? And that's the work that we did today because when you're reading to learn about a topic, there are things that you need to pay attention to that the author wants you to remember. And then he's going to give you reasons why he wants you to remember that. Just like the work you did today with your opinion piece about Winnie the Pooh or Tigger or Eeyore, you told your reader 
which one you liked the best, and then you gave them reasons why. You told them, here's my point. I like Winnie the Pooh the best. I like Tigger the best. I like Ear the best. And then you gave reasons why. You guys did a lot of work today in a little amount of time. You were phenomenal, phenomenal work today. So um, thank you for your hard work and for showing us what first graders can do in 60 minutes. So you can wave bye to the, to the teachers. And you can turn back to me. And I hope when you keep reading from now on, you always remember when you look at a photograph, you're going to say, what's the topic? What are the details? What is the point? OK, good job. OK, I think it's time for you to hit land. OK, I'm going to show you some vocabulary words. What's this word? Setting. Setting. You can line up. Anybody know this one? Helpful. Helpful. Harmful. Harmful. Line up. Where's your teacher? I don't know where she is. OK. What's this word? Line up. Uh, this was a lesson that we did in the fall in November, embedded training for first grade. The purpose of the string of these three lessons was to show how you could practice a standard throughout all of your instruction, that they are indeed connected, and that sometimes it's the teacher's responsibility to, well, always the teacher's responsibility to show how these are all connected. So that was the work that we did today. So in 60 minutes, the students were taught how to pull um, details out of a photograph. They were taught how these photographs and the details in the photographs could help the reader uncover what the author's key point was. We also practiced how to use pictures to support reasons in our own opinions by choosing a favorite character, Winnie the Pooh, Eeyore, or Tigger. So all of this work was done in 60 minutes along with some transitions that embedded some vocabulary work along the way.